Hi everyone, it's more new to tell a, the mixology diva. Thanks for tuning in tonight. Um, we are going to explore gin, okay? I know all you vodka drinkers are like, gin, ooh, yikes. But we're gonna talk a little bit about gin and um, some fun ways that you can make it. Besides a gin and tonic, not to um, diss any of you who love a good gin and tonic. Um, so over the last few weeks, we have reviewed some um, correct glassware, some funky glassware. We've also discussed some bar techniques, when to stir, when to shake. Uh, so we're gonna keep reviewing all those things. So today in New England, it was sort of a summery day or a beautiful fall day. And I would um, like to continue with um, sort of a seasonally appropriate drink. So, uh, what time is it? It is time to make a martini. See my bracelet with the martini? So, back in the old days, a martini, strictly speaking, was made with gin and it was stirred. So, one of the things we've been talking about all along is when you're creating a drink and it has all booze, no mixers, classically it is supposed to be stirred. If it has a mixer in it, it gets shaken. So there are many different gins. I'm going to uh, use Bombay. It's fine. I like it. Um, another one that's very affordable. So if you want to experiment with gin, but you don't want to drop a whole ton of money, I really like this new Amsterdam, and you can find it for $20. All right, if you really want to have some fun, but this one, um, Hendrix, has a tiny touch of uh, rose water to it, or you could add your own rose water to it. It's a classic Mediterranean um uh, well, what would you call it? Not a spice, not a condiment, just a flavoring. A lot of times they use rose water in um, desserts, in um, many Mediterranean uh, desserts. What gives gin its distinct flavor is juniper, among other aromatics. So we're going to try making um, drinks with um, various gins. So why don't we start with a classic martini. Now, in the old days, you used um, two parts gin to one part uh, dry vermouth, but now it, we make it dry, very dry. And if somebody comes in as a bartender and says, extra, extra dry martini, that's code for, I want a cold glass of gin. They don't want any vermouth, but that's fine. Everybody has their way. So we're gonna fill our, anybody remember the name of this shaker? Anyone, anyone? That's right, a Boston shaker. We're gonna fill it with ice and we're going to, what I recommend is using these measures instead of a jigger. So a classic martini, I'm gonna use up this Bombay, so many, is about three ounces. Um, so this is easy to read. We got two and one. So I'm gonna put about three ounces. Now, a lot of you um, have seen me recommend using some really cool um, coops for various up drinks. With this classic drink, I'm gonna stick with a cocktail glass. Oops, my eyes flinging all over the place. Generally, you can do, if you think of it, put the glass in the freezer first, or you can just fill it with ice and a little bit of water. That's what we bartenders do. While we're making the drink, we chill the glass. Okay. Get some decent vermouth. We talked about this, I think, two weeks ago, um, that Martini and Rossi sweet vermouth. I just wasn't a fan, but the Dolan sweet vermouth. I really liked, and that also comes in the dry vermouth. So literally, we're just gonna put a splash of this. And for those of you who 
want to keep it extra, extra dry. No vermouth. <laughs> so if your grandparents or your great grandparents are still alive, you can impress them by making this drink and they'll just get a real kick out of it. So what are we doing right now? We're stirring the drink. Now, I have found out, uh, found through the years, some people would come in and people wanted, they liked their martinis in a very, very specific way, but yet didn't know quite how to order it like that. So I always have to ask questions. Straight up, on the rocks, vodka, gin. And then I realized a lot of people do like their martini shaking because it has a little bit of slivers of shaved ice on the surface, that little meniscus thing going on. And then some people didn't want their gin or their vodka brews. So always good to know what everybody likes. All right, so we're just keep a stirring and stirring. Now, a lot of you are like, but James Bond did it shake and not stir. He did. That was his claim to fame. And he ch kind of changed things up. But I'm just saying, classically, it stirred. So I'm hoping our martini glass is nicely chilled. I think so. And we're going, make sure you get all the water out of it. Classically, you should be using a julep strainer, but if the only strainer you have is the cocktail strainer, that's fine. And if you only have the cobbler shaker at home, that's fine too. You can stir it up in this and you can strain it out of this. So let's go ahead and strain that. Oh, doesn't that look good? All right, what are the classic garnishes with martinis? Olive, lemon peel, and also there are cocktail onions um, that are pickled a little bit, and that is, it changes the name of the drink to a Gibson. But today we're just going to go, if I can keep it on my pick, a classic olive. But some people love... Um, just love a good citrus lemon thing. Now, the way I showed you to make a twist is take a nice sharp vegetable peeler. Go ahead and um, cut a piece about the size of a band-aid. Remember? Everybody remember in this? It's okay. Band-aid. And you're going to crack it horizontally with the bright skin side over the drink and then you're going to see this little fine spray of oil come out so by the way you can garnish it with both things so sometimes i've gone out and i've seen young and experienced bartenders twist the white pith over a drink and that releases yes the bitter part of the lemon so the next thing you do is you take the bright yellow side with the lemon oil and rub it all over the glass. So now that means the, the person drinking it is gonna have just a little bit of citrus oil as they sip. So this is a classic martini. Let me check this for you. You know how I like to check the drinks for you guys. Mm. Actually, it's really good with both <laughs> the lemon and the salt. Mm, mm, mm. Don't forget, you guys can comment so I know you're alive and breathing. Mm. All right. Very nice drink. Nicely chilled. We're going to put that one aside for a second. So for those of you who are like want to jazz up your gin and tonic, we're going to make a different kind of gin and tonic today. And we're going to make it with charred lemon. So I just cut my lemons in half moons. I use an iron skillet or any heavy bottom pan. Just use a little bit of oil. I like avocado oil because it has a high smoke point. Try not to use olive oil. It really is really just for dressings. So I don't know if you can see them. They're all nice and caramelized. Okay, we'll leave those there. Make sure they're cooled off. So now we're gonna make a gin and tonic. So you 
all know that I love my vintage glasses, so I pulled this one out. Now this time, clean your shaker. We're gonna use a little bit of coriander. You can get this at any spice place. This was dirt cheap. You can use it in other cooking. Um, we're just gonna put, I don't know, for a drink, 10 seeds in. We're also gonna take rosemary. So your rosemary should still be growing in your garden. Um, this will last till December. So go outside. We're gonna put that in and I'm gonna use the New Amsterdam this time. Let's see what kind of drink this makes. Oh, I should have measured for you guys. Two, you know me, two ounces. I go above the one and a half. So now we're gonna take our muddler and we're gonna, you don't have to kill the herbs. They release a lot on their own. Um, just gently crush a little bit just so the rosemary releases its oil and the coriander releases um, its flavoring. This one, because now the um, coriander is a little bit crunched up, you should, these little um, small strainers, yeah, I hope you have one in your kitchen, but this is in um, most bartender's kits, well, bartenders who do kind of craft cocktails or anything. So I am actually gonna strain it over a fine mesh sieve versus just the julep strainer, okay? I'm just, I want the flavor of the coriander. I don't need coriander seeds in my teeth, if you know what I mean. All right. Fill that with ice. Okay. All right. Now you're gonna grab a couple of those yummy caramelized lemon moons, half moons, and you're gonna put those in. And let's talk about tonic. You could just use good old fashioned. Um, Canada Dry. It's not bad, but there are some, there are a lot of um, uh, craft artisanal um, mixer companies uh, that have shot up over the last few years. So this one, Q, uh, makes a really nice tonic. I think Feverfew, there's a number of companies that are making higher quality tonics. And one thing is they do not have high fructose corn syrup. They actually have, I don't know if you guys know this, but tonic water is seltzer water with quinine and sugar. So, um, we'll go ahead, we can use either one, um, since this one's already open, let me just use that. And I'm gonna reuse that rosemary spray. Oh, isn't that a pretty drink? Look at that. And, since it's got that cool vintage vibe in the glass, we're gonna, I've collected these over the years, these um, glass stirrers, spoons, straws. Three in one, isn't that great? All right, so stir that up. Let me taste this for you. Oh my goodness, that is good. So tonic has a little bit of that bitter, but I think everyone gets really freaked out about the, ooh, bitter. It, bitter is just a flavor. Just like sour, pickles, sour, it's a flavor. It doesn't mean it's bad. So I really um, ask you to explore bitter because we're gonna lead into my next, one of my most favorite things, bitters. Mm. I'm just gonna keep drinking that if you guys don't stop me. Um, so bitters is a whole class of um, aromatics. You can just go nuts with these. I'm telling you, I've got them. If you 
you're not sure what to get me for Christmas, you can get me some bitters. So I have this Chinese secret bitters. I don't even know what's in that. I have cranberry bitters, orange bitters. You could probably find um, these at any uh, decent liquor store. And then of course, we went over the Angostura bitters a couple of weeks ago when we were making um, a classic Manhattan. This is Fee Brothers. Um, the orange bitters, you can get these on Amazon. Um, I have this little kit of four. One's chocolate, one's lavender, one is grapefruit, and one's cardamom. So you can jazz up any drink with any of these bitters. What's in this one? This one's really fun too. <laughs> Memphis barbecue. Um, Mexican mole, so it's almost going to have like a little bit of a chocolate one. Thai bitters and Chesapeake Bay. Um, I've seen chocolate bitters. I've seen walnut bitters. If you have any opportunity to go into any store and check out bitters, um, I highly, highly recommend it. Uh, there is a store, a great place called the Boston Shaker in Davis Square, Somerville. Um, barware, everything, small store, local business, and they have a bitters bar. So all the bitters are lined up and you can sit down and with the seltzer and they will let you taste all the various bitters. So that being said, I want to make another variation on a gin and tonic. I call this its Madras gin and tonic. We're gonna get our clean ice. Remember, everyone, I keep telling you to change that filter in the refrigerator. Okay. So, we're gonna put ice in this glass. Does anyone remember what this glass is called? That's right, a double old fashioned. You guys are really paying attention. Um, even though I love the Hendrix, the Hendrix um, really should be used in cocktails, maybe with cucumber. I love this gin in the summer. I've made numerous cocktails with it. We're gonna just stick with some um, tried and true. We're gonna go back to the Bombay. Um, get out your trusty measuring cup. How much do I say for a regular mixed drink? Two ounces, that's right, who said that? So, why do I call this the Madras um, Gin and Tonic? Because we're going to use cranberry bitters. Oh my god, I love these bitters. Okay. I do a few shakes. It's delightful. Orange bitters. So, a Madras classically is vodka, orange juice, and cranberry juice. So, here's where the Madras comes into play. Orange bitters. Take one of our fun um, little stir stirrers. Yeah, you could just drink this drink, heck, just like this. But if you want to put, and in this case, I would only do a splash of tonic. Okay? Let me see. Oh my God, that's so good. I can't even tell you. Now, if, I guess I should have my orange out, right? That would help, Maureen. Uh, okay, so you want that drink to look a little jazzier? You could either do a orange wheel or um, an orange peel. Make sure you you know, when I buy my um, citrus fruit for my drinks, I I shop at Trader Joe's a lot, so everything is very inexpensive. I do get organic, because we're gonna be using the peel. We don't need pesticides in our peel. So what do we do? Size of a Band-Aid. Fold it in horizontal half. Get it all around the rim. Get it in that drink. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, hi, Lisa. 
Okay, let me taste this for you. Oh, jeez, as I spill on myself. It is really yummy. So, what's going on in this drink? You've got the gin with a little bit of the juniper. You've got the cranberry bitters, the orange bitters, the orange um, oil from the citrus, and a tiny splash of the tonic with the quinine. So you're getting lots of different flavors. There's a tiny bit of sweetness from the tonic, because what did I say? Tonic has sugar, right? And that's okay. Uh, that's why I would just use a splash. You don't want it to overwhelm. But there is um, definitely the bitters is coming through, and I think it's delicious. This is a great um, aperitif, and aperitif, what that means is classically a before dinner drink. So it is trying to make you become um, hungry for dinner, you know, just like an appetizer is. So this would be great. And I really encourage you to explore checking out some bitters. Definitely have the classic Angostura and perhaps the orange bitters on hand. And, oops, golly, I'm just gonna keep drinking these drinks in front of you, aren't I? Um, try checking out gin, okay? I know you vodka drinkers are all like, but I'm just used to my liquor having no flavor. But. These could be just some fun variations. By the way, when you're charring your lemon, make sure you put on your vent fan so you don't set off your smoke detector. Not that that happened to me, but um, these little caramelized charred lemons are just delightful. I mean, you could put them in anything, but in this drink with the um, coriander and the rosemary, excellent. So, I'm setting up the drinks. We've got um, our classic martini with the olive and the twist. And it's got a little bit of saltiness from the olive. If you really want to go crazy, some people stuff the olives with blue cheese. Very decadent, I know. Um, so now you have to, as you can already see, so it's a warm night here in New England. This drink is already, um, the condensation is on the glass, so the drink is already sort of not as cold as it had been when it was first poured. So what some people do is <laughs> they save the dirty ice and they throw in a couple of cubes as they're drinking. Speaking of dirty, um, to know some lingo, some of you may or may not know, um, I think Jessica knows all this, is to make a dirty martini, it can either be vodka or gin, is you add a little bit of the olive brine. So when you're making the drink and you stir it, so my olives came with a little bit of brine, you would put that in, and then some people even put it in um, afterwards, and you can make it <laughs> a little salty. So for those of us, who love our salt, this is mighty fine drink too, okay? Mm. I might get drunk here tonight if I keep this up. All right, so I'm so glad you guys tuned in and um, I just wanna thank all of you for tuning in and there are some of you who have been generous enough to send me a gratuity and yes, thank you. Um, it, to my Venmo account, it's at Maureen Dash Nucitelli, one of my sisters, will type that up. And I hope this has been helpful and informative and fun. So you can sort of think about um, how to make drinks, learn the basics of how to make drinks correctly, and then go from there. Just if any of you folks at home who are cooks, like you should know how to cook things correctly, then you can add lib. Um, but knowing the foundations of it, and then with baking as well, there are just some basic foundational things. So I hope you've learned something. I hope it's been fun. Every week we're going to review um, classic barware, classic technique, 
one classic drink and one fun drink, if maybe not one or two. All right, so Maureen Tutelli, the Mixology Diva. Um, I hope you can share this with friends and family on your Facebook profile. I really enjoy making drinks, showing people how to make drinks, and um, I hope you tune in next week. I'm here every week at 7.30, the Mixology Diva. Same bat time, same bat channel next week. And um, have a great week and enjoy your gin.